Hindu philosophy has influenced thinkers of varied origin, all non-Hindus, through the ages. Apollinus Tanius, 1st century CE, Greek thinker and traveler, said, I found a race of mortals living upon the earth but not adhering to it, inhabiting cities but not being fixed to them, possessing everything but possessed by nothing. Qadi Syed 1029-1070, Arab Muslim scientist of Cordoba Murch said, Among all nations, during the course of centuries and throughout the passage of time, India was known as the mine of wisdom and the fountainhead of justice and good government and the Indians were credited with excellent intellect, exalted ideas, universal maxims, rare inventions, and wonderful talents. Voltaire, 1694-1778, French author and philosopher said, It does not behoove us, who are merely savages and barbarians, when the Indians and Chinese people were civilized and learned to dispute their antiquity. Jean Sylvain Belly, 1736-1793, French astronomer said, The motion of the stars calculated by the Hindus before some 4,500 years ago we vary not even a single minute from the tables we are using today. Sir William Jones, 1746-1794, to British jurist and Indologist, said, The Sanskrit language is a wonderful structure, more powerful than the Greek, more copious than the Latin, and more executively defined than either. Arthur Chapanier, 1788 to 1860, German philosopher, he said, In the whole world there is no study except that of original Vedas, so beneficial and so elevating as that of Upanishads. It has been the solace of my life. It will be the solace of my death. They present the fruit of the highest knowledge and wisdom. Ralph Waldo Emerson, 1803-1882, American poet and philosopher said, The Indian teaching teaches to speak truth, love others, and to dispose trifles. The East is grand and makes Europe appear the land of trifles. Henry David Thoreau, 1817-1862, American poet and philosopher, said, In the morning I bathe my intellect in the stupendous and cosmological philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita, in comparison with which our modern world and the literature may seem funny and trivial. Frederick Max Muller, 1823-1900, renowned German scholar and Indologist, said, If I were to look over the whole world to find out the country most richly endowed with all the wealth, power, and beauty that nature can bestow in some parts of very paradise on earth, I should point to India. 
Alexandra Shipman on Leo Tolstar, 1828-1910, Russian author and philosopher, said, Tolstoy not only read the Vedas but also spread their teachings in Russia. He included many of the sayings of the Vedas and the Upanishads in his collections. Mark Twain 1835-1910, American author and humorous said, India is the cradle of the human race, the birthplace of human speech, the mother of tradition. Our most valuable and most instructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India only. George Bernard Shaw, 1856-1950, Irish author and the literary critic said, The Indian way of life provides the vision of the natural, real way of life. On the face of India are the tender expressions which carry the Creator's hand. Roman Roland 1866-1944, French author said, If there is one place on the face of earth where all the dreams of living men have found a home from the earliest days when the man began the dream of existence, it is India. H. G. Wells, 1866-1946, sociologist, historian and author said, the history of India for many centuries had been happier, less fierce and more dreamlike than any other history. In these favorable conditions, they built a character, meditative and peaceful, and a nation of philosophers such as could not have often existed except in India. Albert Einstein, 1879-1955, German scientist and humanist said, When I read the Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created this universe, everything else appears superfluous. Professor Will Durant, 1885-1981, American author and historian said, India was the motherland of our race and Sanskrit the mother of Europe's languages. She was the mother of our philosophy, mother through the Arabs much of our mathematics, mother through the Buddha or the ideas come, come, come embodied in Christianity mother through the village community of self-governance and democracy. Mother India is in many ways the mother of us all. Arnold Joseph Tonby, 1889-1975, British historian said, it is already becoming clear that a chapter which had a Western beginning will have an Indian ending if it is not to end in the self-destruction of the human race. Hu Shi, 1891-1962, former Chinese ambassador to the United States, said, India conquered and dominated China culturally for 20 centuries without having to send a single soldier across her border. Aldous Huxley, 1894-1963, English novelist said, The Bhagavad Gita 
is one of the clearest and most comprehensive summaries of the perennial philosophy ever to have been done. J. Robert Oppenheimer 1904-1967, American nuclear physicist, father of the atom bomb, said, Access to the Vedas is the greatest privilege this century may claim for all previous centuries. Geoffrey Moorehouse, 1931-born, travel author said, About a thousand of Jews fled from Palestine to India after the destruction of the Second Temple in 135 CE and were welcomed by the Hindu ruler of the time who allowed them to settle wherever they please. The governing factor in politics was dharma, a righteousness, rather than any pant denomination. Swami Vivekanand has said, like the gentle dew that falls unseen and unheard and yet brings into blossom the fairest of roses has been the contribution of India to the thought of the world.